our scripture this morning is coming from James, the book of James, and we're just going to go ahead and read one through four. Oh, the first chapter, I'm sorry. Amen. James, the first chapter, and we're going to read one. I will read in your hearing one through three, and I just ask that you join me on four. Amen. When you have it, say amen. Amen. James, a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ, to the twelve tribes which are scattered abroad, greeting. My brethren, count it all joy when ye fall into diverse temptation, knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience. All together. But let patience have her perfect work, that ye may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. Amen, amen. May the Lord add a blessing to the readers, hearers, and doers of his holy word. You may be seated. You all have to excuse me because I'm going to have to lean on this podium. I just want to thank you all for supporting me and my family um, during the death of my aunt. I appreciate the prayers and the love that you all showed me. And I just want to thank you from the bottom of my heart. So I just, just, you know, thank God for, for my church family. So I wouldn't have made it without you. And I just thank you for your prayers. I won't be before you long. And the topic for today is the test of faith. The test of faith. And I do have a subtopic. What's a Christian to do in a time like this? What's a Christian to do? in a time like this. As we read the passage of scriptures, here James has written a letter to the 12 tribes who are enduring hardship. James had a desire to help them know the purpose in which God had called them and how to deal with various trials they encounter as they live as Christians in a broken, sinful world. Now, in verse 2, James says, My brother, count it all joy when ye falls into yeah, diverse yeah, yeah. temptation. Right. Diverse temptation. I looked up the word divers, and I found out it mean various, Come many, on. several. Come on now. And temptation in our passage today means test, trial, persecution, and test, trial, trouble, or persecution. Come on. So I see here that James didn't want to restrict his words to a particular trial or a test or trouble, yeah. but to all manner of trials, yeah. Yeah. whether it's large or small, one or many. Uh -huh. He is saying that we are to count it all out trials as joy. joy. We are to account for all the troubles in the same manner. We are living in difficult and dangerous times right now. Yeah. Life is full of trials. Trials of disappointment, trials of hardship, trials of suffering, sorrow. Yeah. These trials come from all different directions. Mm -hmm. Some comes from Satan. Some comes from the evil system of the world. And even some comes from us. But these trials come to test or try our faith. Mm -hmm. These trials destroy false superficial faith on, but they can purify yeah. and develop real, real. true That's faith right. in on, us man. james told us to count it all joy now i know you're saying how can i be happy when all this mess is going on right. but i'm here to tell you that through the joy, through the joy it gives us an opportunity to grow through that joy, it allows God to build our character. Through that joy, we can glorify him. That's right. Amen. When we hold fast to the Lord in hard times, in times of trial, that is proof that we love God and we have faith 
in him. Even Jesus had troubles and trials, according to Luke 22, 28, and he rejoiced in them. We must rejoice in our trials because they are not meant to make us weaker. They are meant to make us stronger. It, it seems to me very apt that James called trials a test of our faith. I see in my own life and in the lives of others that in every struggle we face, we wonder, is God here? Does he care? Is he able and willing to work in this situation? Has he abandoned me? Can I trust him to be my father even in this? And if we hand the trial, whatever it is, over to God, yes. and sometimes we may have to give that trial over to him, that test or whatever it is, that problem over to him over and over again because we have a tendency of picking things back up. So we have to give that thing back to him again. So when we do that, we find that, yes, he yes. is real yes. and yes. present yes. and active yes. in our yes. lives. Yes. We can see more clearly who he is and what he is up to so that, we so that we trust him to do that very thing that he desires to do in us and through us. When we go through trial, but do not choose to trust God or count on him, he can become more distant to us. We have more difficult times seeing what difference he really makes. We know this to be true, not only in our relationship with God, but in our relationship with others. Right. Our That's relationship right. either grows stronger as we trust one another That's and right. find the That's object right. of trust to be trustworthy, uh -huh. or we grow apart through neglect, or the relationship is damaged by our active deceit. Right. James also tells us in verse 3 that knowing this, that the trying of your faith work it patient. Yes, the yes. testing of your faith develop patient and patience shall finish its work. Mm -hmm. When you face trouble of any kind, perceive it as being in process and oh. not under attack. You are in a process that takes time. Thank you, Lord. Thank Problems you. are simply a part of life and in life you are going to deal with difficulties. Mm -hmm. You can try to duck and avoid them, but they will come. Mm -hmm. Patient in this scripture means perseverance, perseverance, abiding firm, steadfast in yes, the Lord yes, under pressure. Yes, yes. People of God, we are like athletes. I the heavier know. the course of training we undergo, the more we should be glad because we know that it is fitting us for the victory and reward. Thank you. So consider it a pure joy whenever you face trials because my Bible tells me in Romans 8, 28 that all things that work together for the good of them who loves him and are called unto his purpose. This patient consists in a calm waiting for the unfolding of the divine will and plan. To be patient under trial is to be calm in thought, resigned in temper, prayerful in spirit, submissive to God, steady in our faith, and trust in yes, God. Yes, yes. Christians down through the ages have had to have faith oh, in a yes, faithless yes, society yes. going through difficult times. We're getting ready to celebrate black history. And I know that it was only faith that kept those slaves going because I know, I know. There's no way. They, they, I know they would have hung me up. They would have hung me up. They, they, I already know they would have hung me up because just being out there and picking cotton and, and somebody beating me. And then I, I'm telling you, they, they, I, I wouldn't have made it. I know I wouldn't have made it. I, I, oh, oh, she said I'd have been in the house. Okay, <laughs> praise God. I'd have been in the house. Oh, I wouldn't have made it in the house either, probably. <laughs> praise God. I probably would have been out in the field. Praise God. Praise God. All right, then. We got a little joke. Okay. Okay. <laughs> All right. But like I said, we're getting ready to celebrate Black History Month, and I know that it was only faith that kept the slaves going. And this ought to be the attitude of every Christian as we face the rough seas and the stormy days of life.
But I know this is not the attitude that every Christian have. So I want you to know that when you're going through a situation where you can't even see God in the midst of it all, you should develop that, and you develop that spiritual amnesia because sometimes when we're going through something, we develop a spiritual amnesia. We keep forgetting that we're Christians. We keep forgetting who we belong to. You know, we start our problems overcome us and we think that we're the ones that's out there in the world. But Christians, we have a hope and we know that hope is in Jesus Christ. So we don't have to worry. We don't have to worry, but just in case if you find yourself having that spiritual amnesia, the first thing you need to do is just fall on your knees, yes. pray, and pray. you need to get in God's word and yes. believe God's word and take his promise seriously. He knows the end from the beginning and his purpose will stand. He promised to take care of his own and he said he'll never leave us nor forsake us. So now through all of the life of the trials and tribulations, we have of the victory yes. but thanks be to God Thank who you. gives us the victory Hallelujah. through our Lord Jesus Christ although we are in a spiritual battle Satan has no authority over the believers in Christ on, God man. has given us his word to guide us his spirit to enable us okay. and the privilege to come into him anywhere anytime Thank to you. pray about anything Thank he you. has also assured us that no trial will test us beyond our ability to bear it and he will also provide a way out so that you can stand up under it now I know that some people need witnesses they need to know uh, uh, some witnesses but where, where this coming from but I remember that in my Bible it told me that Abraham Abraham was promised that he was gonna be the fathers of all nations and God had told him Y'all, my stomach don't stop hurting now. Praise God. Praise Hallelujah. God. Yeah, praise Hallelujah. God. Hallelujah. Praise and God, God had told God. him that the Redeemer was going to be coming through his bloodline. So God had to have. So Abraham had to have faith. Had to have faith in God. He had to have faith in God. So that's my first example. My second example is Gideon. Gideon was going up against the Midianites and he was going up against 132,000 men and Gideon knew that he only had a few men but God had but Gideon had to trust God. That's another man that walked on faith. I'm reminded of Queen Esther that Haman was trying to take out God's people, yeah. but Queen Esther depended on God. Yeah. And what she did was she asked the people to fast and pray. And sometimes when you're going through trials and tribulations, you have to fast and you have to pray. You can't give in. You can't give up on God because God did not give up on us. We have to persevere. We have to keep going. We have to believe what God says. We have to trust in his promises. His word is true. God can not lie. He is not man. So he is going to do what he said he is going to do. Then I have another one. Moses had fleed from Egypt and then God told him to go back to Egypt where they wanted to kill him. He said go and get my people. Tell Pharaoh to let them go. But God, but Moses had to trust God. So he walked in Faith. I got another witness here. Now, sometimes people would think that, hey, oh, well, that was back in the Bible days. Oh, well, God ain't doing that. The same God that did it back then is the same God that can do it right now. He, he is always going to do what he said he's going to do. Now, I'm going to bring it home for you. I watched this young lady come in and out of this church each and every day, come being faithful in this church. And I'm talking about my sister, Blevins here for years years and years she prayed she prayed she prayed but she held on until God blessed her with that job she was faithful unto God she didn't just stay at home and just say I'm not going because I don't feel like it but she came here every Wednesday every Sabbath she persevered she kept going and I'm not saying that she didn't get weak at times but when she did get weak she know who to call on she called on Jesus she called on Jesus and sometimes we may get weak and I'm not saying that you're not going to get weak because you will get weak but you need to know who to call on you need to know who you belong to God is good 
God is good no matter what you're facing. I don't care how big it is. I don't care how small it is. If you're looking for a job, trust that, jo- that God going to give you that job. If you're looking for extra income, trust that he's going to give you that. If you're looking for a, a healing, trust that he is going to give you that healing because he will do it. They gave up Mother Mary long time ago, but she's still here with us right now. My God is a healer. There is nothing too hard for him. He can do all things but fail. So I'm telling you, when the test come to test your faith, no God is there with you. He just wants you to hold on and trust him and believe what he says. I don't care what it looks like. I don't care what the doctor says. I don't care what your boss says. I don't care what your teacher says. If, your t- if the God is for you, who can be against you? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God want us to just hold on. Hold on. I'm here to tell you right now, just hold on and don't let go. And whatever you do, you just stand. You just stand on God's word and believe that he's going to do what he said. 